so much for spending your Friday into Saturday with us. This is your AEW Rampage and SmackDown review for November 4th. It's November, you guys. But I got double Alex's. Double, double the scissors. scissors. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Get in your super chats. Get in your humper chats at humperchats.com. Leave us a thumbs up on this video if you would be so kind. It's a free way to support us. We appreciate it. It helps people find us in the algorithms. Two Alex's at the moment. Um, I'm going to let you guys weigh in on what you want to start with. Uh, I feel like Shibata means we should start with AEW Rampage, but this is also a go-home for WWE. So you guys tell me, and while you do that, I'm going to tell you all about Sean Ross Sapp's awesome long-form uh, feature that he did on Casey Navarro that is definitely, definitely, definitely worth your read. I don't even think that's behind the paywall. That's just done straight up fightful. So go over wow. there. Um, check it out. Sean's a fantastic writer when he gets to kind of like spread his wings in this direction. I think uh, it's some of the best work that he could possibly do. We are, of course, also on Twitch. You can go to twitch.tv slash Fightful Gaming and show us your beauties. Oh, man. That type of Friday night. It is. It's 11.15. OG Alex, how you doing? Yeah. Well, I'm good. I, I did uh, I did the Sour Grab show uh, behind the paywall on Fightful Select uh, while watching Rampage. So two, two birds with one stone. That's always nice. Get done a little early. You know, why, and, and sir, uh, why would you want to get done early? Do we have something going on tomorrow on Fightful Select that you might want to talk about? Yeah, we do. Uh, we have what we call a uh, Sands of Blind, uh, <laughs> which, uh, which because I, I, I damned moral principles, I refuse to watch uh, the, the Saudi shows, uh, and have for now years, um, but. Uh, Kate has no such moral principles, and so she is going to watch the show. <laughs> I'm kidding. It was it was an easy it was an easy. It's jet. true. I um, have no morals. Uh, no, um, but you can watch the show, and I'm not. And I'm going to try and stay off social media for as, as as much as possible for the entire day, so I not I don't get spoiled. And then you're going to tell me what happened during the entire show, and during the course of said recap, you are going to lie to me three times, and I have to spot the lie. So I'm going in blind. So it's all it's 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 sands of blind, but it's also sands of lies because there are three of them, three three lies in the sands. Um, and we did this the last time there was a Saudi show, and it was one of our most popular uh, it was so episodes. Much fun. It, it was, was so much, so fun. much Every, fun. Everyone loved it. So it, this should be um, uh, a lot of fun again tomorrow. Uh, the problem is, is that I explained on the on the on behind the paywall. Is that um, I'm I'm going to uh, my wife's family, mm. like all of her cousins. There's a there's a birthday party for like a couple of teenagers who don't want to be there, who hate everybody. And normally at said functions, I would just be in my phone on Twitter all the whole time, and I'm not allowed to do that. So I'm gonna have to make small talk with a bunch of people that I don't like who don't like me, and that's gonna be really really hard. So I'm doing this for you people. I think it's impressive that that um sorry I think I glitched in the matrix there for a second considering the fact that you don't even have to watch it and you're gonna be pushing the review back later like mm -hmm. that's just mm -hmm. incredible it's like I'm not mm -hmm. even watching the show and I'm pushing it back. but I'm also gonna be on commentary at Excite Wrestling twitch.tv slash Excite Wrestling tomorrow so it actually kind of works out well because you can watch the review on the main channel. The Super Chats and Humper Chats for those do get donated toward a cause that supports the series. People usually. So um, you can tune in and feel good about your donations in that way, which I always appreciate that we get to do on the main. And then on Fightful Select later, probably like nine-ish o'clock, you can catch me and Alex. Alex post family event he doesn't want to be at. Me <laughs> commentary. I am going to lead him through a pay-per-view he hasn't watched, and he's going to have to guess three lies in the entire pay-per-view review that I tell him. So, um, Alex, is there any other reason that you came on here today? Well, but <clears> I'm, <throat> I'm, I'm, I'm here for your Logan Paul rant. Like that's, that's uh, what I, cause, cause, cause you, you, you and I, we were, we we're discussing about how much we wanted to rant about Logan. I already, I already did it on my show and sure. I, want, I wanted to hear yours. Cause your, yours, yours is backed up with facts. 
and me is just me doing that's just me i i want to hear the facts i'm very excited to hear your rant the thing is it looks like we're going to be starting with rampage though oh so do you want to, I mean, hang around all you want, but I just want no, to let no, you know. No, no, no. You kidding me? I got shit to do. <laughs> wow. Aggressive. An aggressive exit from Alex. Well, fine. We didn't want you either, Alex. I'll take this, Alex. Wow. Alex I love coming in second. There's nothing wrong with coming second. <laughs> A lot of ladies would prefer that the gentlemen do that. Hey. Wow. This one, this one. I there really, we go. I really love that you still haven't gotten it. We've been here together it's since a, June. It's also the depth perception thing. Like where my there we go. There. You know it would be Hold weird up. if my fingers just automatically just showed up and you Yeah, if it was end. like on yeah. my feet. Is he there? <laughs> No. How are you? How's the house coming along? Well, I'd like to update everyone who cares. <laughs> That's <laughs> like us. Said. We care about yes, you. Yes, yes. Uh, very well. I snuck by the neighborhood today, and I noticed that um, they finished all the siding on the house, and they brought in all the cabinets, which is now real because my closing date is on the 21st of December. So that's my Christmas gift. That's a pretty good Christmas gift, and I don't know a lot about like architecture and building houses, but it is my understanding that you do want them to have walls. So I think it's I probably tried. a really good sign. <laughs> I, I want a glass, but apparently the town does not. I mean, there's something going on with the way I come out of the show. I don't know. <laughs> glass. It's well, see -through. I'm very excited for you. I'm excited that you are here. I'm sorry. I had a terrible migraine last week and you guys got a double Alex feature, which is Always a wonderful thing for considering it's a backup, but we appreciate the super chats and humper chats that are already rolling in. We got one from JW Pringle saying double Alex is in the bestest Kate. Thanks for doing it for us people. Well, Alex bailed because he has stuff to do, but you still get me <laughs> and Alex, the two man crew. We got Tom Valley chiming in saying best bangs, clavicle and shoulders to start the show. It's true. You got, the shoulders and Alex, like me with <sighs> the bangs, and other Alex people have been steamed up for his uh for his clavicle. So and the best mods in the game. Tonight's gonna be a good night. It is a good night. Shoulders. A good night because you guys are here supporting us. But darn it, we're gonna start with AEW Rampage because Shabata was on our screen, and not only on our screen, but started off the show with this match against Orange Cassidy for the All Atlantic title. Uh it is a very special thing whenever Shibata gets in the ring. If you don't know, and chances are you probably do if you're nerdy enough to be hanging out with us watching a wrestling podcast at 11.20 at night. But if you don't know, um, Shibata is a 42-year-old talent out of New Japan and has had quite a career. He was a tag champion, a multi-time neverweight open champion, Um and in a match with Okada during, I think it was like during the Super Cup, he lost to Okada and then collapsed backstage. Turns out he had a brain bleed, essentially. Uh, um, yeah. And he collapsed a few months later. A martial artist died of nearly the exact same injury. He had a brain surgery that there's not like reliable, factual, positive accounts, but there are accounts that they were like, yeah, they basically had to take his brain out of his head, repair it, and put it back in his head. It was an incredibly severe injury. It's a miracle he's alive. It's insane that he's walking. It's even crazier that he's back in the ring. He's only had a few matches. This all happened in 2017. This is like pretty recent. Um, so it's just incredible that he's able to wrestle at all, much less, as you saw tonight, like wrestle really well and, and still in a pretty hard hitting way. Uh, he had two dream matches in AEW, Brian Danielson, because duh, of course, and Orch Cassidy, <laughs> which I love that they got to make that happen, and it happened on Rampage tonight. This was a real, real fun opener. All of that incredible history aside here, ultimately it ends with an orange punch that got laid in. It initially just kind of dazes Shibata, and he's able to counter with a suplex. Shibata goes to the ropes, but Orange Cassidy hits another orange punch to win. I thought this was really, really fun. I would love to see Shibata and Danielson because I feel like they have a similar style and like you see the way they lay in those elbow strikes, everything's so hard hitting, but this was a nice collision of styles, right? It's like fun when people are similar and then it's yeah. fun when 
people are different here, but I thought this was like a, a really, really strong opening match. And it was also nice to see Orange Cassidy defend and not a triple threat scenario, which is nice. But I really like seeing the All Atlantic title on television with regular consistency and people getting to see other sides of Orange Cassidy outside of like the silly stuff. Um, what did you think of this opener? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's cool that you get these um, matches on Rampage to ramp up the show, right? And it's it's cool to see the different clashes of styles, like you just said. And it's really cool to have Shibata just, you know, show up at AEW. And, you know, they're doing a lot of the stuff that we read about online when it comes to, like, the indies and how, you know, wrestlers are wrestling each other and having a good time and doing so. But it's cool to see it on national television you get, you know like and and living out these matches you know which i i do hope every wrestling organization could learn from because that's fun that's how yeah. you get people hooked we're also seeing that right we're seeing in wwe that shinsuke gets to be a part of muda's retirement tour and the carl anderson stuff feels a little bit like a work of his not being able to to be there mm -hmm. so hopefully we get to to see some of that but this is part of competition driving a competition to do good stuff i sincerely think part of what i think has been some extremely encouraging signs in the women's division might have been a little bit of a nudge from wwe i think they are now leaning in a more negative direction than we saw a few months ago but like i think that drove that i think in this case AEW being open to working with so many promotions kind of pushed wwe because that's part of why brian danielson left they did try to make it happen for danielson i believe with with Japan because that was so important to him and Daniel said is worth making every effort for, but it's exciting. Like it's, it's nice to see healthy outcomes from competition driving each other. And, and this is certainly one of them, but definitely a fun way to start off the night. We got Kylie chiming in saying Shibata versus OC was a lot of fun. And I'm probably in the minority here, but I didn't mind Tyson on commentary. It wasn't good, but I don't know. It was kind of funny and cute and like an excited child. I can't believe I didn't mention this. Mike Tyson was on commentary at Atlantic City. Um, I felt like he didn't really add anything. It just seemed like he was high and not he really probably was. adding very much. But similarly, I don't actually really mind it. And I think part of that is because Rampage. I've always said kind of no matter who's on the desk, Rampage commentary has always felt like they were on a field trip to me. Like when Taz is there and just like so loose with this commentary yeah. everybody's having fun i feel that way about the darks too like it's just really really fun to have that of like a everybody's just kind of like a little bit of a loosey goose and having fun tyson like did he add anything no was it still fun just to have him there sure why not what did you think of mike tyson on commentary yeah you know again we all know the dude is uh loves to puff puff and pass pass you yeah know. he literally does it on a podcast I'm, I'm yes not, and not he has news oh, over here yeah. no exactly <laughs> um i think it's 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 fun i feel like rampage is that like that cool uncle who just gets away with stuff like you get to go out with your cool <laughs> aunt and uncle for like the weekend and you go and do stuff that you're so that's what rampage is they just have a ton of stuff that they do on there like when they bring mike tyson and stuff today like that's cool like to me it's like it's it's he's still pop culture he's still re relevant it's not like no one knows who the hell he is and they're in atlantic city that in, in your home state kate they are <laughs> they are they're an hour and a half if i didn't have such a busy couple days i would maybe have made the effort to go but i thought That's this a busy was lady. fun i am yesterday it was just my sister's birthday which was so much fun um, we went to, I took her to dinner in New York. She lives in New York. So we had wow. a delightful time. It was so good to see her, but I worked all day today, took the train home, watched my wrestling and doing this, going to bed and then going upstate New York for commentary tomorrow. So it's a big wow. turnaround. Would have loved to have gone to Rampage, but unfortunately couldn't make it, but I get to hang out with all of you people. So is it that unfortunate? No. Amazing. But I agree. Like it is kind of like you're getting away with something. Tyson clearly is like, felt like a, a fan which is also just like a fun like presence to have on a on a commentary desk so that is a blast orion ben 66 saying shibata versus orange with tyson on the mic god bless this <laughs> was one of those like wrestling in 2022 is insane moments of like the fire ant i believe from chikara facing shibata 
on television with Mike Tyson on commentary. It was, it was one of those. So I thought that was fun. Dystra fell. If I'm saying that right, I'm not, but I tried, <laughs> I tried really hard, but Shivana was tougher than both Luchasaurus and Phoenix. He says he is like, I, I can't imagine getting in a ring with someone who's been through the brain injury he's had and felt feel okay like laying anything in but he felt okay laying stuff in <laughs> like he was still inflicting damage on his opponent I think Orange Cassidy was a little bit hesitant in a way that is probably not a bad idea like I feel like sometimes Orange can really lay his stuff in too but I think he was leaning into smart things but those orange punches especially that first one I felt like maybe we're a little bit hesitant and you know what I'm okay with that the guy had a very serious brain injury where he almost died so um but a whole bunch of fun we got a lot of super chats and humper chats coming in about them thank you so much for your support tonight DNC Digital saying Tyson mispronounced abdominal stretch and said I've been doing this a long time <laughs> <laughs> well you know what I don't think JR is uh hi and he had some mix-ups tonight too so you know he what? might have and been i'll be honest he, he sounded maybe, very loose maybe they maybe they were all having fun backstage and we you know we'll never we'll never get to know we'll never I show my know. shoulders real quick uh somebody asked so i've been no, working you, out again they so have like, to, they're, they're they have to good, pay man. they have to pay for oh, that kind of oh, action oh my god put it away no Ladies and you want to see shoulder it's i'm already out here with clavicle showing all right same goes for the men as it does for the ladies, okay? This is equal yes. here. If you're going to pay to harass the ladies, you pay to harass the men too. It's called equality. A, Look it up. I'm a fun-loving Christian, <laughs> okay? I'm turtlenecking it now, okay? <laughs> I missed you guys last week. This is fun. We missed you. <laughs> we got Ron Hollick chiming in saying, to coincide with Wrestle Kingdom and AEW Dynamite in Seattle on January 4th, I hope to see Shibata versus Danielson for that date. That's a really, really, really good call. I think they'll probably do it. I know. I'm wondering in this what Danielson says is his kind of like retirement run. Brady said it too, so we'll see. Mm. But uh, <laughs> I wonder if what that's going to look like. Cause he said that was a priority of his, he wants to go work Japan again. Obviously that wasn't going to happen with the pandemic. Um, there's still kind of like travel issues, I think, and precautions in place. But like, I wonder if that's going to look like, well, is it crossover with AEW? Is he just going to take a couple months off of AEW television and go to Japan and work new Japan proper? Is he going to beat Chris Jericho for the ROH title on my television? Like it's crazy right now, but I am curious because I know he wants that something he said is really important to him in an in interview. So I wonder if that's going to look interpromotional or if it's just going to be time away from AEW for a chunk of some months and then going to, to New Japan. But mm. I guess we will just have to wait and see. Thank you guys so much for that nice little run of Super Chats. It's nice to have... Um, you know, when we're like in between pay-per-views or there's nights where it's good wrestling, but there's not like a ton to talk about. We don't always get things. Bless but... us with your humper chats and your beautiful Please super stand. chats. Just Please slap stand. me in the face with them. <laughs> uh, so we do move along to the Blackpool Combat Club interview slash Y2J versus Daniel San Claudio, Sammy Guevara interview. Um, I actually really kind of like what they set up here as long as Claudio or it's I feel like it should be Danielson wins uh I kind of liked the dissension that they set up tonight between Jericho and Sammy Guevara so there's going to be a four pack for the ROH title uh it kind of started as a triple threat between Jericho and Danielson and Claudio here but Jericho because he's Saint, his first rodeo, it's his Ocho rodeo, uh, is smart enough to say, <laughs> let me at least even the odds. I'm going to have Sammy Guevara, my guy, in, in this match as well. And then if it comes down to me and Sammy Guevara, Sammy will know what to do. And Sammy kind of gets caught off guard. And I really, really, really liked how this went down because Sammy gets interviewed later and he's kind of like, as long as it's with the Jericho Appreciation Society, all is well. So I thought that was like a very natural way to set it up. It's the classic 
Ricky Bobby shake and bake, Alex. Mm. This is straight out of Talladega Nights, but I really like that. And it's not a story I think that we've seen. I can't think of seeing that particularly recently. Uh, like in a way that's not like a paid mercenary or whatever, like MJF was doing where it's like somebody that's contracted. It's just like, a, hey, that person's my friend. I assume they'll do the right thing. And then that person saying like, hey, that's, I'm going for that title too. It's still my opportunity. So what, and we also don't see a ton of triple threats and we've seen them more with Orange Cassidy's reign, but we don't see a ton of triple threats and fatal four ways, which I appreciate because those are dumb. If you have a title, why would you make it harder for yourself in a match? You don't even have to be involved in the decision, right? So I liked that there was a justification of it evening the odds and Jericho doesn't want to look like a coward and he shouldn't feel like one because he's already beat these guys before, right? right. So um, I actually really liked the way they set this up because it's a logical way to get to a fatal four-way. How do you feel about this? Yeah, um, I, I, I honestly think that they should... Um... They should do more stuff like this. Uh, I I know that that they they try this whole the trios titles and they're trying to put a lot of different teams together and whatnot. You know, I don't know. I I just I feel like that's getting stagnant now. I don't know why. Is it? Do you feel the same way about that or no? Or do you feel like it's ramping up? Yes and no. I think. Well, Tony. I mean, after the, after the Thomas, debacle, that you know. that's what it is. So. I don't have a ton of complaints outside of the women's division about Tony Khan as a booker. What I do have a complaint about is sometimes he gets so married to his long-term vision right. that he can't adjust on the fly or sometimes he doesn't strike while the iron's hot in the same way. I think that's what happened. I think there was a very clear set plan in place for the trios titles. Then brawl out happened in the suspensions. Right. And then Death Triangle had them. And now there's kind of like seeds of dissension in Death Triangle. But I feel like the division was there because we were built to something. But I right. think he had yes. just a different idea in place. And then what, right? I was kind of always of the belief that I felt like that was the perfect place for the Dark Order to get some momentum Same. for themselves. Right. They wanted to continue the Hangman and Kenny story. I totally get it. I didn't have a problem with it. But like, yeah, we haven't really seen that many trios defenses because the it was kind of like these guys are reliable, stick it on them. Right, and then yeah. there was no plan in place. So right. um, but I agree with you. I I like seeing multi-man matches that make sense. They're just hard to yes. come by. And right. I think for uh for ROH, that's also perfectly fine because quite frankly, they don't have TV right now. So I know, I know. We always it's funny because when we do these uh these shows. We kind of like seem to go around in a, in a complete circle as the circle gets completed when we say what Kate just said. We're waiting for <laughs> Ring of Honor television. Like it's it's just this giant, amazing plan that we all know is going to come together one day. We just don't know when. Unfortunately, this is where we're at. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. I... Oh, thank you. But it's also like. I have less of a problem with it when you're using these talents, right? Like Jericho, Brian Danielson, Claudio, they're very important wrestlers in all of wrestling. So it doesn't feel like, oh, they're just trying to stick ROH on television. Like they're putting real name behind these. So 100%. I also appreciate that Daniel Garcia is absent from this because maybe this is how he finally makes his way out of the Jericho Appreciation Society. Maybe something happens where he helps out saying, I don't know what that looks like. But him being absent from this makes me think, okay, well, maybe he's not going to be in goofy heel roll forever. I really wanted him to break away to the Blackpool Combat Club. Right. So we'll see what happens there. But it, the fact that he chose Sammy over Garcia, I feel mm -hmm. like is very, very intentional. So hopefully that leads to some fun storytelling. These two get away from each other, though, because we've seen them face each other so much. <laughs> we got some more Super Chats and Humper Chats from you guys coming in saying, Shaka 29 with a hopper chat that I love saying, if Suzuki is a murder grandpa, does that make Shibata murder uncle? <laughs> <laughs> I would buy it. I would buy it. In all honesty, I love that he's back. Shibata played a big part in getting me back into wrestling a few years ago and his match at Wrestle Kingdom 11 against Goto cemented my love of New Japan. Um, Shout I, out to Kate, bro. Getting her freaking me. New Japan. All of reference. No, no, no. That was a part imagine. of the chat. 
Oh, that was I thought chat. you. I, no, no, like, no, no, that wasn't crap. my commentary. That oh, wasn't okay. my commentary. Never mind. I take it all back. No so give, shout out you, to Kate. We give that love to Shotkid Twenty Nine only, but I love stories like that. Like it was, um, you know, everything looks a little bit different at this moment. But like, see, a Punk's return was huge for me as a wrestling fan. Like that, he was my guy, and it sucked when he went away. I still love wrestling, but um, when he came back, like that was actually a really emotional thing for me because he like had such an impact on my love of yeah. wrestling like when guys like that return and it feels like you have such an individual connection to them i love that stuff i love hearing that stuff it's i don't want to veer off too much but do you, have you had that moment with a female wrestler uh there's a story i've told on here a couple of times but i i my eyeballs fell out of my head crying when i met thunder rosa very nice okay, <laughs> yes. i'll tell it again real quick but i would um she was doing an autograph signing in North Jersey and uh, I loved her work because I thought she did incredible stuff in NWA. I thought she was the biggest attraction in the whole promotion man or woman. Um, she isn't like 22, which I loved. Like it was nice seeing somebody with her presence and uh, a little bit older. And I listened to her interview on talk is Jericho. And she was just saying all these things that really resonated with me at the time of like, um, she was a social worker in Mexico and yes. she was just seeing kids that she was caring for just get murdered. Like, and it was, she was depressed and she was looking to wrestling as an outlet constantly. And she was talking a lot about like not being able to pour emotionally from an empty cup. And it was just like, all oh, I certainly was never doing anything that heroic with my life <laughs> that time, especially, but it was all stuff that I was really resonating to of like um, trying to help other people when you're depleted. And I wrote her a note. And I gave it to her and I was like, that's how I can tell her how much I that meant to me without having to cry in front of her. And then she was like, um, oh, we're actually filming a documentary. Will you read it right now? And like, this was also like in COVID. So I had a mask on. So I don't know if she heard a word I said while I was reading it, but I was just like ugly crying with my mask on. She was so sweet and wonderful about the whole thing. But awesome. <laughs> that, that was, that's kind of the closest I've, I think I've come with a, a female wrestler. But, thank uh, you for sharing that i appreciate that oh you're welcome you're welcome i've told it a, a couple of times but it uh my wednesday night mark order podcast uh co-host aunt was with me and he saw me just i was very thankful he didn't take a picture because he could have because he could have <laughs> but <laughs> brian medina chiming in uh with a, a super chat saying orange cast orange cassidy versus the new sunny kiss would be a good match Ooh. that could be a lot of fun that could be a lot of fun. This heel turn for Sunny, I think, has been healthy. Um, it's hard for me to root against Sunny, but that's just one of those heels I'm going to have to root for because I love Sunny Kiss. But we move along to this Tony Storm interview and into what I thought was a really good match of Rip Baker and Jamie Hayter defeating Madison yeah. Rain and Sky Blue. Um, I really liked this story that they're building out and i also really like that they're building out stories there's definitely yes. been a focus on the women's division and i spoke about this a little bit before but even when there's things that executionally haven't been perfect they're definitely trying and that's all i've been asking for like there's definitely an effort did i think what happened on wednesday was perfect no but like they're trying to tell a story in a very different way than they have before they're getting more women's talent on television um, my only thing now is like, okay, is there a women's tag division though? Cause you, you're putting a lot of really key talent in tag matches. So yeah. like, are we doing that? Are we not doing that? What does that look like? But there's a lot of stories here. Some of them are non-title, right? Soraya and Britt Baker is a non-title story. So I just really appreciate that we're getting some real, real effort and emphasis put on the women's division because uh, I feel like the talent has come a really, really long way in both their signings and the growth of the talent that they already had. So I I really like that. And so we got a nice little match here. And I liked the story with Tony Storm talking about uh, her and Jamie Hayter being like basically homeless together <laughs> during uh, the pandemic and saying, what happened to this sweet girl that I was living with? She's turned into a bully. Like, I like it when they lean into real stuff like this. But I thought this match was pretty good. It ended with a, a ripcord elbow strike from Britt Baker um, as she and Hater delivered double thrust kicks. 
We got an Insiguri from Madison Rain, and then Britt hate it. Uh, I'm sorry, an Insiguri on Madison Rain from Britt, and then Hater plants her with the Ripcord Lariat for the win. I thought this was a really decent match, and it got um, yeah, it's four prominent women's talent that are in stories right now. Hater is so over, man, and she's really she, good. Yeah. She deserves to be. She's extremely likable. She has a great look. She's super hard hitting. Um, I I'm very happy to see it. She's like a kind of feels like a homegrown star in the women's division, which I love. And Sky Blue, I can't say enough about man. Oh, no. Like she just she's so young and she did a lot of work in this match. And she's just looked really good. And she looked really good in the mixed tag matches that we saw for the AAA titles, too. I, I've loved her work. And she's so young with a really bright future. Encouraging stuff to see. Encouraging stuff to see. So what did you think about this? Ladies division is on fire right now at AEW. They revamped whatever they're doing backstage. The matches are, are more psychological as opposed to trying to get moves done in the ring just to you know get a match done. You can see that in their style and in what they're doing. They're telling a story in the ring. The girls are on top of their game right now. They're actually the girls' matches are a lot more fun than the guys at times. And I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm seeing something that I that I, you know, the progression of what they're doing together. Um, and you know, Freddie said it best. He's falling in love with Jamie Hader. Like he's completely head over heels for her promos, for uh, her attitude, how she plays the crowd. You know, like cheer for me, but you know, boo hoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We love that. We love that. It is really encouraging to see. And we got some super chats and hopper oh chats about it. Uh, Tom LaValle saying, really like what I've seen with Sky Blue. Truly. She's coming along. Well, she and Jamie were good tonight. And I don't hate that they go again Wednesday. Yeah. I like that for a lot of reasons. One, we're just seeing continuation with stories. How much do we love that? And Agreed. these two can really go. These two can really go. One thing that I feel like we've seen growth in Jamie Hayter with is that she has gotten really good about um she's like pretty athletically built and she lays her shit in really strong so I think she's gotten really good at adapting to other people's ring styles and I think Sky Blue especially with what we saw tonight a little bit is is a good dance partner for her so I'm excited for that Joey Bag of Donuts saying since AEW has so many belts already why not create an always find the hard cam championship and give it to Britt Baker <laughs> Because, sir, there would simply be no other challengers. She's so good at that. She's so good at it. Uh, OG Alex said that, like, you know, on video games where, like, your character gets built on, like, certain different strengths and whatever, like, her secret trick would be the finding the camera strength. Like, it's just incredible <laughs> how good she is at it. She's so good. <laughs> DNC Digital chiming in saying... Brit and Hater can turn into a better executed Triple H and Randy Orton. Interesting comparison. I like that. Some looks at the belt, subtle digs, let it build, then turn. So I think you keep the belt on Tony Storm, especially before it gets uh before she gets her match with Thunder Rosa. Mm -hmm. I don't hate the idea of having Jamie Hater win that match and Brit being like, wait, she's my friend, but like that's my belt and them having a really nasty feud about it or Brit costing Jamie certainly seems like the most logical way to meld both of those stories, yes. but I, it's very fun. Like that's a championship match where two different stories could come out of it. And both would be strong stories. Like really, really seeing some progress in in this division. I love it. I'm Henry here for Casey. It. Uh, I'm not going to read that first sentence because we don't do that about talent here, but uh, he was not a fan of the match so much and said, aside from the Stars promo, is there anything worth finding? I would say that opening match was awesome. And I would say the main event was fun. I don't know if it's like a, oh my God, you have to seek it out. But if you are like Biggie and you like seeing big meaty men slapping meat, that's the match well, for you. <laughs> I'll tell you. It's not Ron up to midnight yet. That's right. <laughs> Ronald Hollick chiming back in. Thank you so much for your support. Um, saying Willow Nightingale, next ROH women's or TBS champion. I think next TBS champion is going to be uh, a returning Chris Statlander, but I think the plan has always been for Willow to be your, I don't want to say inaugural because maybe Mercedes Martinez has the belt, but like your first 
on TV, ROH Women's Champion, I, I think, is Willow Nightingale. I love how over she is. And before ROH shut down, now Roxanne Perez in, in NXT was your champion, but mm. it it was the two of them that were just, like, leading that pack, which was so awesome. So, um, love love seeing the support. Look how many women's talents we're talking about. Like, it makes me so happy. Know, they all crazy. feel, like, fresh and relevant and doing yeah. something. I wish Willow was on TV, but right now she's she's working in Japan, and that's that's awesome for her too. So then we get oh my gosh, guys, how do you just not like swoon for Ricky Starks? I just love this guy, man. Every time he <laughs> is, he oozes mic. charisma. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable, and I loved his promo tonight. He's basically out there to say that he's entering the Eliminator tournament, which I adore. Uh, he seems like one of the most logical people that you could put in it. And he says a few things. One, he was trending even though he wasn't really on TV because he wasn't on TV. And he acknowledged the crowd and said, I don't have to tell you how cool I am, do I? You guys just know. <laughs> and that is textbook cool guy stuff. Not necessarily verbalizing that, but nobody thought James Dean was cool because James Dean was like, I'm so cool. It was like, no, he wears a leather jacket and a white t-shirt and he just walks around like a total badass. Like he owns the place. Cool guys don't always go out of their way to tell you they're cool. Right. And I, I thought this was awesome. Like he really leaned into that. I think he sincerely was touched by the fact that he, he was getting this push and then he was off TV a little bit and people missed him. People were talking about it. I was one of those people. I think he was sincerely touched by that, but also saying that he respects the hell out of Mox. Mox has spilled his blood 10 times for this company, but what happens when this blood dries up is a phenomenal Ooh. promo line. Uh, he says MJF's a generational talent, but what happens when a generational talent meets an absolute talent? So just really, really strong stuff. He's super over with the crowd. He's super over with me. Um, <laughs> Tom yeah. O'Malley is saying, he pointed this out. He had typed... Tight pants, loose shirt, the pearls, those slides, Ugh. fashion. Ricky Everything Starks works. is fashion. He called out his own fit. We love to see it. But he feels like uh, one of the most organically built talents in this company. You you and a lot of other people compared him to 1997 Rock. Uh, I, I think that's a perfectly suitable explanation. In the ring, I find him extremely explosive and efficient with his moves. Everything he does makes sense. Nothing is superfluous. He's just the full package, man. I really liked this promo tonight. I love that he's in the Eliminator tournament. Him and Dante being in there both make a lot of sense. I hope he goes really far in this tournament. Uh, what did you think? You know, so when it comes to Ricky Starks, uh, behind the scenes, you already know a lot of stuff that I share <laughs> with you. Um, so it's really cool. Nothing that, bad, by the way. All good things. Yeah, all good, all things, good things, 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 by bad. the way, guys. It's just that Kate is my my home girl that I go to when we talk wrestling and behind the I'm scenes, behind girl. the curtain stuff. So yeah. I'm a pal um, and a confidant. I'm basically. Yeah. Married. I can literally say this is off the record, but yeah. So um, he's great, man. And I, I believe <clears throat> wholeheartedly, I guess I'll text Kate about this later that he is, <laughs> is due for something big and he knows it. He pushes himself out there he knows what to say to the crowd at all times and he's not he's genuine about it right yeah. so you Very can tell in his promos he's not trying to sell ricky starks the character to you he's selling he's not even selling he's giving you ricky starks the person and this is why they love him so much he's at it best my character is that i'm cool i love it it does That's not it. need to be Give me pearls. More... I might just show up next Friday with pearls on. I don't know. Please we'll see. Do. More men in the fashionable pearls. I'll take it. Ronald Halleck saying Ethan Page versus Ricky Starks for the Eliminator finals. Ricky Page versus Ethan Starks till the end of time. I have, I'm, they haven't even had like a collision yet. And I'm extremely invested in the idea of those two being on the mic. Stokely Hathaway also there to fill in some gaps. My God, how much fun is that? Silk shirt on a pole match for oh those my two. gosh just <laughs> just fashion on a pole match. i had tweeted like i want ricky starks versus swerve for just like the coolest mf -er oh. in the world 
like that. They're just the coolest people I've ever seen in my life. I love them. And I love this chat too. <laughs> JR saying nice shoes. Ricky <laughs> killed me. I, JR was high. JR, I'm just, I'm just telling you right you now. He had to have been. Some, something was up with the feller. We got some more chats coming in. A lot of talk about Rampage tonight. This makes me so yeah. happy. Um, Luis saying that also everybody watched Ishii versus Shibata from Wrestle Kingdom 10. Mm. That got him back into wrestling. Strongly recommend it. I actually really miss Ishii and Takeshita being around. I think everybody was so in love with Takeshita and the note that he left on, which they should be. But Ishii was doing such good work, too. Like, I'm salivating for him to get back in. That match with Eddie Kingston was like, that match was built for me. <laughs> Shaq in 29 chiming in via Humper Chat saying, if you had told me three months ago I saw a brighter path for the AW women's division than WWE, I would have said that's as likely as Shibata wrestling Orange Cassidy with Tyson on commentary. <laughs> <laughs> that is the perfect chat. It's a it's just nuts. It's crazy how much everything turns on a dime. But Rampage uh, Live is live rampages. Else. And I think so we're pretty Alex much solid on live rampages yeah, alex and i said it last week it's totally it's a different monster it is it is and i think it's consistently staying one um and i think the filming experience has gotten better for both dynamite and rampage because they moved some of the dark workload over to that yeah. taping experience so that just makes these like very long dynamite tapings a little bit easier so eddie kingston lance archer bandito roosh and brian cage all announced to join Dante Martin, Ethan Page, and Ricky Starks in the AW Championship Eliminator Tournament. Page versus Kingston on Dynamite. Get out of town and take a boss. That's going to be so much fun. Bandito versus Roosh on the next Dynamite. Holy cow. Uh, Page versus Kingston bums me out because I think that means Eddie's going to be out pretty early. But Starks versus Archer and Martin uh, versus Cage for the Rampage of next week, I believe. So some really, really exciting stuff. That feels like a very healthy talent pool to have involved in this because those matches are going to be great. And there's a couple different ways you could go with who end up in the finals. But that's going to be a lot of fun. I will take that all day, every day. All so. day. <laughs> Give it to me. Moving along to our main event. Samoa Joe and Warlow defeat the Gates of Agony. And then... I know you're happy about what happened next because <laughs> P -p -p powerhouse Hobbs comes out, but Granby saying rampage felt AI generated yawn <laughs> of agony. Ouch. I actually really liked this episode a lot, but um, it's not for everyone. Like it's I not. really, yeah. people love dynamite this week. I thought dynamite stunk for like the first 90 minutes of this, <laughs> this week. So wrestling's a buffet right you're supposed to uh to have I'll that but lots of meat my only complaint about i didn't really have a problem with the match itself i actually thought there were some fun cheats from gates of agony in this i really like the embassy i love prince nana so i've i've loved some of the roh integration i just wish it wasn't taking up so much AEW promotion time uh but basically this match let me down a little bit because i thought all four people were going to be showcased really well samoa joe never was going to do anything that disappoints me ever but this really felt like this is a wardlow showcase which isn't even a bad wrestling move my expectation was just like biggie big big meaty men slap and meat expectations this ended with three power bombs uh from wardlow of course as one would expect from the symphony conductor himself but this match was fun I was just kind of thinking this was going to be like a little bit more of an everybody gets a chance to shine situation. It felt very agented toward making Wardlow look great, which he did. So kudos to them for that. Um, I also just feel like if you're going to do a two-man power trip thing where they both have singles belts and tag belts, they need to also be defending the singles belts. Otherwise, you're not really on a power trip. You're just like on a nice road trip, but not like a power trip. You're just only defending the tag titles. But a fun way to end Rampage. And then Hobbs emerges at the end. Wardlow is hot under the collar. Alex is dancing already because he's so excited. I don't blame him. I'm also very excited. But I really liked Samoa Joe kind of trying to like 
calm down, young Padwan. Like, it, it was nice. It was like a nice touch of him being like, don't do this here right now. Like, young Wily guy, this is, save it, kind of. Um, but we're basically setting up Hobbs and Wardlow for a TNT title feud. Uh, I think Hobbs might be the one to dethrone Wardlow. But if not, I'm hoping this goes a series of matches versus a one-off. Or if it is a one-off, it's in a prominent spot. Uh, what did you think of the match? And then, OMG, how excited are you for the title match that's getting set up? I, I, I agree on everything, on all ends with the... Uh with the match and having to like, you know, they sh shuffle how many people they're going to put on television with like two minutes left of yeah. rampage, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and still have mommy pa -pa -pa powerhouse come in. He is man. Let me tell you something, man, right now, I'm gonna put it out there. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if I had swung the other way, powerhouse <laughs> all day. All right. I'm telling you right now. I don't even joke with that. He is so, he looks like a damn superstar, man. Like if you see him walk down, you know, into a store or down in the, in the airport, you can just tell, man, he looks bad. He looks like that nineties, badass, bad dude in a movie that can kill you. And like, oh man, I just, I, I really, I really hope honestly that they do good by him. Because he is one of the one of the original AEW guys that has always stood out to me in my head, and I really do hope that they start putting you know faith in him. If yeah. it's the TNT Championship, let's go, let's move forward with that, and then see where we're at. You know, sometime next year, this this time next year, push him, push him. There's no put a mouthpiece with him if you don't want him. You know, if you feel like he's not strong enough on the mic, and push him to the moon. I think I think the Hobbs Starks feud could have been executed a little bit better. I 100%. think what what that feud did for both of them though, how over they both came out of it is such a wonderful uh example of how wrestling cannot have a loser even though someone loses, right? Like and I think we're gonna get that blow off match in a better place. But like I I agree with you. I'm I'm a Stark scale. I was a Stark scale before he even came in here. I loved what he was doing in NWA. Um, I'm so yes. excited he's getting the push here. I loved him as a heel. I love him as a face. I didn't know I would love his face work as much as I am. Um, Hobbs, I also just his presence. Like it's not even just his look. He's obviously like built like a truck. Yeah. Um, but like just when he walks in a room, the room shifts. He's like that kind of energy guy and those you can't teach that right like no, that is yeah, something yeah. he has the lip snarl that he does when he's like talking oh my God. like yeah attitude like you know like his, his his um um what do you call it oh jesus i just forgot the name of it the um anyway yeah so i was gonna say something but i don't know i forgot i, I had too many <laughs> thoughts in my head i want to let out You're at once so i'm so sorry Hobbs. i'm like yeah no yeah, yeah, you yeah. loved him and I think they've done a good job of raising him. He was very early in his wrestling career. He was working yes. on darks and like, don't forget, started as a face and they turned him heel, had him with team Taz, which I think was a really good move. So yeah. they put oh, his in the spine work. buster, his spine buster. Spine looks buster. Like he'll, Insane. he'll put you through like you feel it. He's putting you through the ring. It feels like he's actually busting someone's spine. Like it yeah. feels like you're not going to be able Bust to my spine, stand up. <laughs> Okay, that was 4837 for those of you keeping clips at home. Uh, but, but it's nice because it means that the work that they've been doing with him is paying off. Like he's really come along in the ring. Um, yeah. I think it I think it's awesome. And his that you can foster presence. I don't know if you can teach it, but that's something that they I have to because really, if, the, really gets. if WWE get got a hand on on him. Yeah. Obviously, they have 5,000 people they got to push before him, but yeah, you know. Yeah, but there's like like him if or he was the Jade, focus. there's people that they that oh, WWE would yeah. totally try Jade and too, my God. Hobbs with Stokely is the next Lesler, Lesnar with Heyman combination. Can you I imagine agree with that? You, I, when the firm came along, I was like, Hobbs is a no-brainer. Like that, and I still think maybe that pairing happened somewhere down the line. I... 
I personally, nothing wrong with Morrissey. He's doing the best work he's done, in my opinion. He looks great. Um, he, I think, functions very well with a mouthpiece that isn't so much maybe. I think he and Enzo were a very successful and overact and did well. But someone that where he's like, oh, I'm just a big badass that goes and beats people up is a great role for that guy. However, if I had my druthers, Hobbs and, and Stokely is like a, a no-brainer oh combo. God. A no-brainer combination to me. So, and I, look, Stokely will do anything for a buck. He's made that very apparent. So we will see what's coming down the line. But that ends our episode of Rampage. We'll wrap up some of your chats here. We got Dice for chiming back and saying, P -p 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 powerhouse versus Wardlow is money. It is. It is. I'm really glad they decided to go in that direction, regardless of what the result is. I think that's another situation that's a feud where both of them are going to come out the better for it. So, um, and it's just nice. Also, we're, we're seeing some fresh talent on television, you know? And it also feels like they're on their own course right now. You know, they understand what's happening at WWE with, with, you know, like all the matches and everyone coming back and blah, blah, blah. And all this, you know, the big change over there, but it kind of feels like they've, they're going their course and just, doing what they have to do to get ahead and it's showing like <laughs> they really are doing some cool stuff over there i think it's more even that they are getting back to their roots like i feel Thank like they've God. gotten away from trying to compete yes. with wwe and they're getting back to what they're best at and that makes me happy the alternative we wanted yeah be the, be the alternative don't map yourself after what's already out there because that's already there then you're just the diet version of that God. which is kind of how i felt like I didn't need Jeff Jarrett showing up, but. Well, he has that backstage role now. Backstage, I love. I don't need him on my screen. He's a business, you know, developer, Duga Hickey, whatever he's doing. Well, cool. go smash guitars backstage. I don't need him on my screen. <laughs> but. I get where they're going. Sting and Darby versus him and Jay Lee. I get it. Doesn't mean I like it, people. Special guest referee, Ric Flair. Okay, you know what I think of that idea? Oh, God. I don't want to see it. I want it untraceable to the world, Alex. I want to not see it. And if I have to pay for it, I would rather be in a different country so I didn't have to pay as much for it. And darn it, if that's not all possible with NordVPN, Sean Ross App is here to tell you all about it. You hear me talk about NordVPN.com slash Fightful a lot. It's because I use it every single day. You can listen or watch your favorite shows abroad, whether you're in the States like me and you want to watch shows from uh, the UK or Australia, or you're just traveling and you want access to your local things. You can shield your data from snoops and criminals. You can safely listen to your shows, stream shows, browse in complete privacy by shielding your IP address. You can change your virtual location with just one click. Protect yourself on public Wi-Fi. You know that can be dangerous. People can get access to all of your stuff. Secure all the devices that you own. It's available on all major operating systems. And you can connect up to six devices separately with one subscription. 30-day money-back guarantee. Four months free added on top of that deal. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. With three great tiers for you to enjoy. Guys, yes. NordVPN for real made a really big investment in in Fightful. Like, sincerely, a really big one. And then, because it was a symbiotic partnership, because you guys use their service and are happy with it, and because you guys hit them up on Twitter and told them that you found out about them through us and stuff, they said, darn it, we're going to give you even more value and better deals. So those new ads are actually because they have made even more savings giving you different options because their initial discount was only, I think for the two year plan. So just really, really awesome stuff. They've been such a great partner to us. So even if you don't use their service, please let them know that you found out about them through us. But also if you need a VPN, try their service. You get a huge discount with the code fightful and they really are like the best in the game at this. Can, so. can I, can I say something about Nord real quick? Of course, as long as it's so, good, because they're a sponsor. So obviously uh, <laughs> I'm, they're part of Fightful, so I, I'm getting the subscription done and all this stuff now that I moved down here because, you know, I watch the Knicks. 
and it's very hard to watch the Knicks, oh. right? So what do they have? They have the smart DNS uh, part of their plan where you can just use their DNS in my Apple TV. And I automatically oh. watch the Knicks as if I'm in New York City. I didn't, I didn't have to buy the NBA plan. And uh, do thank you, Nord. I love you. <laughs> well, we love that you sincerely love them. We don't. He doesn't get a bonus for that. That was all real. I guys, don't. So. I don't even get paid to be here. I get slapped by Kate. <laughs> oh, stop! Which on occasions is perfectly fine with do me. That. <laughs> Moving along, but um. Before we switch into the SmackDown chatter, which we are about to do, we do want to remind you to subscribe to Fightful Select. There's some really good stuff that's going on over there, including you get me and Alex doing our Crown Jewel Sands of Blind show tomorrow, where Alex <laughs> isn't going to watch it because of his ethics and morals, which I respect and love, but I am going to watch it. And I have to tell him three lies, and he has to guess what those lies are, so... Um, I think I punked them out on two thirds of them last time. It was really silly and a lot of fun. That's going to go on probably closer to nine o'clock at night. Your main channel one will go on right after the show. And again, those super chats and humper chats do get donated to a great cause. So uh, you can feel good about where you're sending your money if you want to participate in the post show. So uh, yeah, we appreciate it. Other great things going on at Fightful Select. You got some updates on the Colt Cabana appearance that we saw on Wednesday. You get a nice little Peter Avalon interview. There's some more information on WWE and Saudi Arabia. Lots of updates. A lot of updates. And most, I don't want to say most importantly, but my favorite fun news of the week is a potential women's talent that WWE is planning on bringing back. Someone that I'm a really big fan of. So go check it out behind the paywall. I'm, I'm excited. I think that person rules. So I am happy to hear that she may be gainfully employed with a, like, the most successful wrestling company in the world. That's a good thing. Shout we out like to it. Emma. Shout out to Emma, who now is there and was also reported on Facebook. It's like, but <laughs> this is a new one who I'm pumped about. But we are going to go ahead and flip into. Smackdown, but I actually have another Humper Chat to clean up from Kylie. Um, she said that she agrees with Alex that Hobbs is question mark, but you also got War Daddy and of course Stroke Daddy. Stroke Daddy. Oh. <laughs> That's Ricky Starks. Do I zip over the entire AEW roster? Probably. Look, it's hard being by in a wrestling fan. <laughs> Kylie, we love you so much. Kylie's awesome. Um and it makes sense. There's some very attractive people, not even just from an aesthetic standpoint, but that like you're just so cool factor. Uh, and we got you're <laughs> welcome, like, by the way. No, I'm just kidding. It's fair. Take the victory lap. But Ronald Hollick saying Brian Davidson saying Rampage is too short got me. Yeah, that was cute. That was a cute little <laughs> line that he gave in his promo. I really hope that he wins. Because if he loses to Jericho, even in a four way, I'm going to be like, are we kidding? Um, but they got me Norma saying, hi, everyone. A whole lot of meat emojis. There was a lot of big me meaty men slapping meat tonight on our screens. A very wow. biggie, heavy episode. They would have loved it. Um, oh, I didn't know this. This makes me very happy. So the Crown Jewel main channel chats are going toward one of our incredible moderators, the wonderful Cher Delaware. Um, your chats are going to be donated to her. She is dealing with some crazy yes. medical expenses and some terrible consequences of those regarding insurance and her work schedule. She had a legitimate surgery and they wouldn't give her paid time off. So she is a single mom of two wonderful kids. She's an incredible person. She's always supporting Fightful. She's always supporting the people in her life. She's always one of the first people to check out in on me for no reason, every reason. She's incredibly, incredibly kind. So know that your money is going to a good place if you can go and support her. She also has a GoFundMe at the top of her Twitter page, at Share Delaware, if you are able to support. She is a gem, an absolute gem of a human being. So... Please help out if you can. But we're going to go ahead and dive into SmackDown. 
where my Logan Paul rant will certainly be coming a little bit later. I apologize. You're going to get pretentious Kate in a couple minutes, but first we start with what I thought was actually kind of a blast of a match with Sonia and Liv Morgan. Sonia underrated. I'm going to say it. I think we saw it here in a few spots. I think she's very good in the ring and her ring awareness showed up a lot in here. Cutting to the end, Liv countered the final cut um, and hit a code breaker and the oblivion into the chairs and got the win here. Uh, I thought this match was a whole heck of a lot of fun. They gave it a whole heck of a lot of time, which always helps. Um, I think this new Liv persona is working. My only complaint is I wish this Liv persona came before her title reign. But this seems like they're leaning into something that's organically in her and exaggerating it, which is like the old wrestling adage, right? Like yourself turned up to 10. This is working for me. Um, I really liked it. There were a couple of moments in here that were scary and she's gonna, I think, have to figure out how to walk this line. It's kind of like Shotzi where like the reckless thing is really fun, but you have to be careful that you're not actually reckless. There were a couple of dives in this that Sonya really, really saved her for. Yeah. Um, that was just really great wing and ring awareness on her part. Good on her for keeping her opponent safe. That's such an important part of this pro wrestling world. There was also a really fun spot where Sonia tried like a German suplex off the apron to put Liv through the table, which I thought was kind of cool and Liv fought her off. But I, I just thought that was a really fun spot. I thought this was a fun way to, to start the night here. And it was nice seeing a women's match get a bunch of time. It was also nice seeing the end goal of that match be something that's really productive. I feel like uh, Sonya was a really good dance partner for Liv. I feel like they both felt really comfortable and that what they're doing with Liv now is working more than the version she was as champion. That's not a knock on her as champion, but I think what they're leaning into right now, something's something's clicking there. Like this is working for me. What did you think of this opener? Yeah, I agree. Um, there, there was some, I don't want to call, they weren't botches. It was just, she just didn't have enough steam uh after clearing the ropes which is she i'm glad she had someone there to to help her and uh yeah. sonia's a, sonia's a vet in the ring man she is so good in and out but yeah i thought it was a fun, again i thought it was a fun match the girls got a lot of time mm -hmm. which well deserved they're still pushing this new character um I, I don't i don't i don't want to say it's a harley quinn i don't want it to be a harley quinn i really hope that it's her just kind of losing it with everything that's happening around her you know um and to keep it going i i want i'm gonna give it some time and i am i'm hoping that she she excels in it and they just don't do what they always do where two months down the line she's in a tag team and she let go of that persona you know yeah i think this is um i like it because if they can make it a little less gimmicky and a little more yes. charactery, I think it'll be really good. Cause there's a lot in like a never say die live Morgan is there's so much money in that to me. I, I know Alex Pulowski has talked about this at length too. He kind of like saw the handwriting on the wall where, with where this was going, where yeah. it's like, if you're going to beat me, you're going to have to kill me is an awesome yes. direction to lean into. I think you could maybe tone down some of the other stuff, but they also are their WWE. Like they're gonna they're gonna probably go an exaggerated route, but this I think is something that's really, really working. She continues to be a super over talent. And I, I was really encouraged to see what we saw tonight. Orion Ben saying if we have Liv doing if we doing this with Liv, you gotta have Candace train her. That's actually a really, really, really mm. good call. Candace LeRae kind of is very familiar with this template of a character and um I mean, we could just talk about her war games history the rest of the show if you guys wanted. She's incredible, but I love that idea. And I feel like that direction, that's actually, that's a fantastic call. Leaning in that direction versus like the Harley Quinn type thing. Yes. Um, I mean, if Liv is going to bring anything, she's going to serve a look. I think we know that much. But I do like the idea of her kind of going more, more that way. I think that could mm -hmm. be really, really fun. So a great, great show. Moving along, we have an interview with Emma and Xia Li. And I, this was really short, but I thought was really, really fun. I did not love Emma losing at her return, but um, Xia Li kind of comes out and picks on her a little bit. And she's like, hold on, I didn't just lose in my return. I lost to Ronda Rousey. And second of all, elbow strike. 
I loved that. I thought that was so funny of her. Like, listen, all right. A, it was Ronda Rousey who I lost to. And B, bam, I beat your ass. I thought that was a whole bunch of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so a, a quick, but I thought super effective little way to keep Emma on screen. What did you think? Yeah, I, I, again, um, the girls getting time, huh? They just they're just progressing stories on both, episode. yeah, on on both companies. They're um, putting them out there. Uh, you know, for a time there, we noticed that there was a um, there wasn't too many women on the roster to kind of like, yeah, you know, part fill of it the is void. the replenishment of the talent for sure. Yes, so very very happy to see um, Emma back, and it's funny because uh, Freddie, myself, and and Jeff were talking about Emma not too long ago. She just reappears out of nowhere back on WWE television, which was really cool. What yeah, reported on Fightful. <clears throat> look at you giving double credit. We love that. But it is four ninety nine. There were some that you were like assuming is gonna we're gonna come back. I don't know if people assumed that Tadiel Dashwood Emma was gonna come back, and I think it was a really valuable pickup. I think that was a really smart call. Word. But we move along to Ricochet versus LA Knight. Um LA Knight talking that s on the way to the ring this was fun um i think this match was cool i feel like maybe because it was a taped episode and the first time they had this match they didn't go to the next level that i think um they probably could have so this match ends with ricochet missing a flying nothing um and then he and LA Knight kind of trade roll-ups, which is the laziest, cheapest way that you can end a match. But I did like that LA Knight grabbed the rope um, to give himself the leverage for the roll-up. And it at least looked like they were trying to sneak a win. It wasn't like, and the roll-up. And they don't do this as much as they used to, but we got so hit over the head with these freaking roll-ups that I'm allergic to them now. <laughs> <laughs> some fun spots in this even though i didn't feel like it kind of like went into the next gear that we're used to seeing from these guys but ricochet with the head scissors into a drop kick like not even the most insane stuff that he's capable of but his execution is so clean and athletic that like even when it's simple stuff like a drop kick you're just like holy crap this dude is nuts i really liked uh this moment where LA Knight headed up to the top rope and he met him with a leaping hurricane rana like just little things where you're using your acrobatic abilities in logical wrestling ways that's not flippy do nonsense to me because it's still logical ways to execute a wrestling match and that's one of the things that ricochet is the best at in the world this was a taped episode and I did feel like there were some pretty obvious editing in this um I wouldn't mind if they this was something that they built out into a full feud if they ran it back. Uh, but a, a serviceable enough match, I just had really high expectations because Ricochet looks like a superhero every time he's on my screen. What did you think of this? Yeah, I, I think that um, they complement each other. I, I feel like anyone who, who goes into the ring with Ricochet, I, I find myself saying the same thing over and over again. They, they kind of like complement each other very well. Um, LA Knight looks rejuvenated to me. He looks extremely comfortable being back to, you know, what he was. Um, and I'm so happy <laughs> that I don't see him with the maximum male models anymore. I mean, it is just, I just wanted just... to see him wrestle too. Like, yeah, yeah. He wasn't even bad yeah. in the role he was in, but like dude's a wrestler, let him wrestle. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm with you on that. He does look very refreshed. He does. Very he refreshed. looks very happy too, which is cool. Like you get you get someone who's wants to be there and do what he does. Uh Michael Dammit chiming in. Hi, Michael Dammit. Nice to see you in there saying sorry to go back. You never have to apologize for going back. We'll take your chats and supports whenever you want to send them. Um, oh. but I think Liv's issue is her speed coming off the ropes. She, yes. That is something that seems to be a little bit of a pattern with her. And she's also an extremely tiny person, literally physically. So yes. I think it's hard to um, sincerely gain that momentum on with that stash for some time. That, that takes some work to build up. We saw that with Brie Bella a lot too, where it was just like literal physical weight, making it really hard to like <laughs> kind of really have that momentum going through the ropes. But she has improved in so many ways and you love to see it, but that is something that I think that um, would be helpful if she continued to kind of work on it. Yeah. 
<sighs> now for this. Oh boy. I'm just going to say this right now. I'm leaving the room. This is the kind of rant that I normally do behind the paywall on Fightful Select, okay? But I'm not on Fightful Select tonight. So I just want you to know before you go into the comment section, I know it sounds pretentious. And I know it sounds like I'm taking wrestling way too seriously. This is ridiculous. I know what I'm about to say is overkill. So just know that I know that already. <laughs> I could not care less about the Slogan Paul and Roman Reigns crap. I could not care less about it. I don't think it is helpful for wrestling sense. And I don't think it's been the business success that everybody is pretending to be. And that he's so popular because guess what? Casual wrestling fans in 2022 are not a thing yet. I'm sorry. It's not true. He has like 95 million friends, subscribers, and I don't feel like I've seen. And by the way, I took a very cursory look at all this stuff. Okay. Very cursory look. I didn't go deep diving because I don't care that much, but I haven't seen ratings go up. On episodes he's been on, I haven't seen huge spikes in ratings for segments he's been on. Last time I saw anything about merch, the leaders weren't Logan Paul. They were Drew McIntyre, probably right after Clash at the Castle. That would make sense. They were Roman Reigns. And guess what? Bray Wyatt's back. So no way he's diving in that. The only thing that he has on WWE Shop is a design that says Logang like Logan, but Logan. And that reminds me of Rogaine. I don't know why anybody would buy it. I don't think that he's getting the views that people thought he was going to get. I looked this up. His match on SummerSlam, one of the most important pay-per-views that they have, is not on Peacock. It's on their YouTube. It's been up there for a few months, has 1.4 million views. That's not bad, but just as a comparison... Mustafa Ali versus Cedric Alexander on 205 Live has 2.1 million views. Mustafa Ali and Shinsuke Nakamura on SmackDown for the IC title has 3.3 million views. And here's my point. 1.4 million is a great number. But if you were getting all this added exposure, what that tells me is they're not fans that are further checking out any of your stuff. Nerds who are watching Mustafa Ali and Cedric Alexander probably are going to go watch that match 900 million times. I'm probably out of those 2.1 million views. I'm probably like 1.3 million of them because that match blows my mind every time I watch it. So I think all of that is pretty ridiculous. Um, I don't think the wrestling build has been good because I don't care how many 50 year old boxers who are looking for a payday that aren't trying against you that you beat. I care if you're trying to be a champion in this promotion what you've done in this promotion. What you've done is one singles match, which was like the third best match at SummerSlam, and one tag match. If I were in the back, I would feel insulted. If I was Mustafa Ali, if I was somebody that was like supposed to be getting rejuvenated out of this regime change, and you're telling me it takes one match from a successful podcaster who has a frog splash and a better three amigos than Dominic Mysterio, and you get a title shot for that, I would be insulted if I was out there breaking my bones, bleeding, testing my emotional and mental health, giving everything I had week after week, trying to get myself over and get on TV. That would be insulting to me. I thought his promos of the, the all it takes is one lucky shot was the most boring, obvious promo that you could give. I give him a ton of credit from the fact that he is charismatic and it was well delivered. It was so obvious and boring. Apparently in Saudi Arabia, people are chanting for Sami Zayn. I didn't think nobody's really been talking about this match that much since the press conference. Everybody's talking about what's happening in the bloodline, not who Roman is facing. That is also what's on TV week to week. I'm not an idiot. I see that, right? But I just don't think he's super popular. Is A, something that's paying off because casual, casual wrestling fans don't exist. And B, I think the story has stunk. I think the match will be fine. I think the crowd will be super hot for it because I think they're just going to be really excited to be watching wrestling in Saudi Arabia. But the crowd's calling for Sami Zayn, who's obviously not going to go over there. And on top of that, all of this good PR stuff, I would, as someone who has been in PR for over a decade, I would argue that, I don't know, what he did at a very specific forest 
is as much of a PR risk because you know what? That cost him three and a half million dollars and ended up in a lawsuit. I would argue that when you're under contract with WWE, you probably shouldn't be in the press attacking Bad Bunny, who is a draw that proves he can fill arenas with his music that everybody loved what he did in Royal Rumble. You should not be coming after a top celebrity draw for living in Puerto Rico for a tax break when he's from Puerto Rico and you're bringing your uncharismatic brother who has allegations along for the ride. I'm sorry. None of this is for me. I think it's completely overblown how much he's brought to the table in terms of exposure and PR. I don't think any of the people watching it care. They certainly aren't going to care in a sustained way. If you are going to do this, and we all knew they were going to do this, doing it in Saudi Arabia where storylines don't really have too much of consequence happening that often, this is the place to do it. I just think that you should do the work in the promotion you're in to get a championship shot for the promotion that you're in. Two matches, one singles match, to me is an egregious way to go about it. I think it's a symptom of a lot of things. I think it's a symptom of Triple H taking over what he did. I think it's a um, symptom of they wanted to do this in Saudi Arabia at this time and they just didn't do the creative work leading up to it because everything got expedited or whatever. Like, I, I get all of that. What I'm saying is I don't give a crap about your main event with your reigning two and a half year champion at your second biggest event of the year. And that's it. So I was kind of waiting to go on that rant. I figured I was going to do it behind the paywall. You're going to get on the main channel. I'm sorry if that was too preachy for some of you. I get it. That's not like analysis of what happened on the show tonight. But I wanted to see what this was going to full build look like. And I just think it hasn't been that successful. Like when I went to see the success that they got out of like what he brings to the table and I was like, Mustafa Ali's, I knew Mustafa Ali's numbers were like pretty recently because when he wasn't on TV, I looked him up because I was like, I know this guy's a draw. Let me see his numbers and they're high. His retribution returned, which sucked. Retribution sucked. Have 4 million views. So you're not getting, you're not getting what you set out for, in my opinion. And also, this is just me doing like five minutes of looking into things. I could be wrong about merch sales. They might be further along now than when I saw last. I could be wrong about segment by segment stuff. Like, it's extremely possible I'm wrong in those ways. But from a wrestling perspective, I thought that sucked. I thought it was an insult to the locker room to begin with. And then when I looked into the, like, extra exposure getting out of it, I'm like, not real fans. Not anybody who's going back to look into other stuff, certainly. Mm -hmm. You gave away a a pay-per-view, a SummerSlam match for free on your YouTube, which you never do. And it's it can't even compete with what Mustafa Ali's doing on 205 Live. Mm-hmm. So, Finn, rant, that's it. I'm sorry if that was obnoxious to some of you. People in the chat are liking it. So, I'm glad. But, like, I just feel like I knew I wasn't going to be super invested because I don't really care about Logan Paul that much. But I feel like uh, even when I try to look at it more objectively, this is not something that has been successful in my eyes. So, I know you obviously have very specific ties to some of the insulting things that he's done and said, but do you, at least from a wrestling perspective, have any interest in this? Or are you on the same page? I have zero. Like when I tell you, <clears throat> when I tell you that I'm, pr- I'm, I won't be watching it because I'm going to be out tomorrow doing stuff and I won't be missing anything to be honest. Um, I would watch it and I will support, my good friend uh, uh, Austin, Mike Rome, you know, he's yeah. one of my best friends. So I always support him and everything he does. But other than that, um, it, I, too, have my gripe with him. Sure. Um, you know, uh, you mentioned the Bad Bunny thing. Bad Bunny has given millions of dollars back to the island. So if he's getting a tax break <laughs> from the island that he's from and he's bringing back the economy in Puerto Rico by himself single-handedly saying here's 137 million dollars I mean wh- why would you talk about a man that's doing that but to each their own but yeah good job I thank it. you 
Thank you. And for more rants of a similar style, subscribe to Fightful Select. That's all Alex and I ever do. So, uh, Alex Pulowski and I constantly ranting like that. His are usually of extremely like higher mind booking than I can even wrap my head around. He's a genius in the way because when Alex sees something booking wise that he doesn't like, he has this illness where he has to go fix it in his head. It usually works out really well. So subscribe to Bible Select for more rants like that. I'm glad people liked it because I was like, oh no, I'm going to sound really preachy, but I'm glad a lot of people are in agreement. That actually makes me feel pretty good. So <laughs> we will move along. Matthew Plus, our perpetual heel saying, it's ironic that Katie is in PR since she has <laughs> such a transparently shit personal brand. You know, the sad thing is, I part of me agrees with it. I, I don't really put effort into my personal brand. You kind of just get what you get. I'm too busy. <laughs> Being she a, is a yeah. mid looking woman in wrestling Twitter. Please, you mid? wish. Whoa, I'm super oh, no. hot. Look at this <sighs> clavicle. God, no doubts gets you far with the neck beard, honey. What's said. happening in here tonight? He's paying us to insult me. I don't care. I don't care. He said, That doesn't fool me. You're unoriginal, uninteresting, and phony. Thanks for the money. Wow, love that, Matthew. Plus, love that guy um however okay so it wasn't just about logan paul we also got some other stuff from the bloodline in here uh which i do want to call out because it does set up the usos probably with the new day again which okay here's the thing i think the story is really good i've seen this match so many times and so what happens with these matches is I always am like, I've seen this so many times. I'm going to be so bored. And then the matches, they always do something different that blows me away. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to be open-minded because this also makes sense, right? Like the New Day is basically coming in here saying um, that they are the longest reigning tag team champions. Their record is in peril. But this starts with the Usos, uh, Jimmy and Jay reminding us that they're in their hometown, which I thought was fun. The Usos also reminding us that they're the ones. The Brawling Brutes, their opponents in Saudi Arabia, are the twos. And the New Day comes out and says <laughs> they're rooting for the Brawling Brutes. There's a little bit of jaw jockeying, and we see uh, Sammy, Sammy Uso. He's not even honorary Uso anymore, and he's not really Sammy Zayn anymore. Sammy Uso is coming down to the ring with Solo Sokoa. As all hell is breaking loose. Uh, we see Butch Savage Holland from a double Uso splash, but... Solo wipes him out with the Uranagi and the bloodline is standing tall. So it looks like after Crown Jewel, we're probably going to get the Usos versus the New Day again. I'm not mad about it. I I think it's a natural story. It's not either team's fault and it's not Triple H's fault that they ran that feud into the ground and the matches are always incredible. So while I am tired of it in a way, I am going to stay open-minded because I feel like they sure. always blow the roof off the place. Um, what did you think of the segment outside of Logan Paul? <laughs> I, think, I agree. I agree a hundred percent with you. And I, I think the Usos um, where they're at now. And I think with, I don't, I don't think they'll lose to new day. Um, I think something bigger is coming down the pipeline. So, um, you know, we all know what that means. So please, 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 <laughs> yeah, please yeah. be Sammy Zayn and Kevin Owens. I yeah, think they're I trying th to stall the timing. I think that's they a are. Yeah. new year kind of thing. Yeah. And that yeah, makes sense. Yeah. I, I can't blame them for that at all. But yeah, I, I mean, I don't I don't have much to say except that, you know, I, I hope that when it finally does happen, it's a it's a huge deal. And I hope yes. that everyone understands that. You know, these guys have been champions for a long time. They've held both brand belts hostage now for a long time. So yeah. we'll see where this goes. I know that there's been talk about new uh, uh, belt redesigns. So maybe they combine both of them and then we just go back to having one uh, tag team champion for both brands. And, um, you know, we go from there and. And uh, hopefully it happens at a big pay-per-view, like a like a Royal Rumble or something. I think that would Royal Rumble time. If they're not doing day one this year or they're not, yeah, three, yeah, like you might as well. I think Rumble is probably like the perfect spot for that. They need oh, yeah. to make a decision on that either way. They either need to unify the belts or have separate belts. But them coming out, I love the look of them having both sets of belts. I think that looks really cool. Yeah. 
but like i feel like kind of commit to one or the other at this point uh but i think it's great and we've also just seen encouraging developments in the tag division like i'm excited for what's coming down the pike for the viking raiders we saw a little bit of that tonight we saw some vignettes with um what we're assuming is sarah logan i think is a a safe call there so good stuff in the tag division i just want montez ford to also feel better soon because i need him i need him We've got Matthew Plus, I think he even said before, asking you to show off your belly button, asking you to show off your cha- tramp stamp reason. <sighs> There's my, where is it? Right here. There's my tramp stamp. <laughs> there it's probably it is. very meaningful script. Pain is weakness leaving the body. There you go. You, you hussy. <laughs> if you want to see my other tramp stamp, you're going to pay more pay- than $2. That's behind a paywall, my friend. Only Alex. <laughs> only alex yeah um we're gonna move along to Shayna baszler versus natalia i know hey. people i know people don't love ronda rousey why the hell hasn't she been a heel this whole time though i know <laughs> it's so much more natural for her because the person she was in ufc you could have as a baby face, but not the type of baby face that WWE builds. They don't know how to do it. Becky Lynch did it, and she's the only one to have done it in like the past decade. And it was because they tried everything else to keep her down, and it just stopped working. And she became the man, and she became Lady Stone Cold, and it was awesome. Yes. They could have very easily had like a really fun shit talking Ronda Rousey. I don't know if her delivery would have been there, but like the one who said, was like talking about how her body was meant to do more than F millionaires like the Kardashians. Like you could have made that person a baby face, but they don't know how to build that baby face. They were building a woman who said Natty Boombaladi on our television. Okay. <laughs> if you don't like Rhonda, I get it. I will say her as a heel is so much better. Like so much better. I also think her with Shayna Baszler is a really, really, really smart call. I wanted to see these two face each other. I'll take the pairing. I think it's a good way to keep Ronda away from the title for a little bit. This gives her something to do where you're still using her star power. You're still using what makes her important kind of like in the public eye. I know a lot of people didn't like her. She's real over in arenas when you go to shows. So um, her helping Shayna get on this path, I think is great. This match was fine. It ends with Baszler avoiding a sharpshooter, which I thought was really cool, and putting in the uh, the clutch on Natty, which was great. Yes. She can't get free, and she falls asleep. Shayna Baszler's a badass. I think Natalia's a, a perfectly suitable opponent for something like this. This wasn't that long. It didn't really need to be. We got a lot of um, women's wrestling and segments on the show tonight, which I thought was great, but I thought this was a perfect way to just kind of move along what's been in play. Do you have any thoughts on this? No, I just I they I feel like poor Natty always gets thrown into these uh, situations, man. Like she's a workhorse. Uh, she's gonna be, you know, that middle piece that continues to move storylines somehow. Like she gets her ass beat, she gets pushed aside, she has a bloody nose, and we just continue going. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully, hopefully, um, Shayna. I mean, Shayna's so good. She's the best. I oh my her. god, I, I want so her much. to stomp me. I don't know why, but yeah, you know, I just. <laughs> what's happening tonight i love it i love it and um i do appreciate that they at least acknowledged that shayna and natty had a working relationship before right so that was cool like they referenced something to be honest like i feel like it's always like natty and a friend kind of like how we were getting raquel and a friend Mm -hmm. and i i was like oh right yeah they were together (laughs) so i like that they at least, even though this was essentially a catalyst for this Ronda and Shayna thing, they at least told the story that was there, which was really good. So I will take it. Good stuff. Some good stuff tonight. Yeah. Um, We have a chat coming in from DNC Digital regarding our favorite Sammy Uso saying, Elimination Chamber will be in Montreal. I see the Goodfellas hit on Sammy the night that night. KO and Sammy versus Uso's at Mania. Uh, that could be very fun. Uh, yeah, I wonder how, I think that's where they're going. I just wonder how they're going to get there. Like, and I don't know if they know that yet because 
if they want to set up like Jay versus Roman, you could have them lose the tag titles at Royal Rumble, right? And then the gold is disappearing from the bloodline. And then Jay and Roman have these seeds of dissension and they're going to face each other at Mania or whatever. Like, I think it depends where the bloodline is going as a unit. So I'm excited to see it. But yeah, Elimination Chamber in Montreal with as over as Sammy is right now and Kevin Owens would be really, really fun if if they're a tag team by then. That would be really I thought fun. they were getting rid of that, uh, all the uh, pay-per-views like that. I guess that one's sticking around. Not all of them. Some of them. <clears throat> Elimination Chamber went away for a little bit because it's extremely expensive. Like those pods are really, oh, yeah. really costly to make. Elimination Chamber is one I think that if used properly is a really fun one to keep around. I think the ones that are just like overly gimmicky. Like I don't know if they'll do Hell in a Cell and TLC. Like you know what I mean? Like there, yeah. there's some that are redundancies. Right. And some where the stipulations are handcuffing the stories a little bit. Yeah. So I think it's smart. I think it's smart to alleviate some of that. So we get a Drew and Carrying Cross video package. I don't know what to say other than I hope these guys get to actually wrestle instead of hit each other with the strap and get pepper spray this time. <laughs> Have the blow off. <laughs> Let there be the physicality they're both capable of. Like, I'm not the biggest Carrying Cross fan in the way he's being presented, but like, I don't doubt that he and Drew could probably do some really fun stuff if mm-hmm. you let them. Um, did you have any thoughts on this video package or heading into the match at Crown Jewel? I'm still sitting around waiting to see what's uh, what they're trying to do with Cross, you know. And um, mm-hmm. and obviously, you already know my feelings about uh, Drew. He's but a we little were bit... getting to a place where you were kind of liking him more, but then I feel like yeah. we got back to this. Goofy we got stuff. we went right back. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't exactly. think that's on him. Like, I think everybody was like, the Drew that we love is the one that we saw in the Shillelagh match against Sheamus. Yeah. And then because Karrion Cross is so gimmick heavy, kind of like went back that way. But yeah. Um, hopefully they get to do some fun stuff. That's all I think. He'll be tag teaming with Sheamus soon. I actually, I wouldn't hate that. But he's got his brawling <laughs> brutes. What are you talking about? Uh. So we get. Um, <laughs> MVP essentially sending five jobbers and to fight Braun Strowman. That's his opponent for tonight. And instead, Braun basically eats them. Uh, not a lot to say here. The extremely real, not at all sweetened crowd was very <laughs> into it. I feel like uh, I felt the crowd, crowd noise was really being pumped, man. Like, but this was also a double taping, so I kind of, I kind of get it for this instance because the real crowd. No, was I know, really I know, but but I, yeah, this was noticeably cheesy and fake. Yeah, one hundred. <laughs> like, bro, listen, I know, I know their gimmick again. They're they're hoarding, so I understand they want to bring all these wrestlers back. So, so they hoard them. But with I Braun, don't know if it's hoarding. I think they with, were depleted for a really long time. You think so? Time. I feel they have so many. I feel like they have 215 people backstage. But for me, Braun is just so he's still. I mean, he just he, he's still doing the same things he was doing before. It's just it's just tweaked. There's not there's no there's yeah. nothing there to excite me. I mean, there's nothing there for him for me to say, wow, I could really get behind Braun. He's still doing the gimmicky stuff, you know, like you might as well just bring back the train. I keep on saying this. Bring back the the smoke and the train. I'm muting you. If you mention that train one more time, swear to God, no more train talk with him. He is one. Look, there's I've said. <laughs> um. I've said a little bit like I'm going to give Hunter till Rumble because I feel like there's all these things we've improved on. I don't know if booking is necessarily one of them right now. Like there's been some really weird booking. I feel like they really got themselves into a hole with everything with damage control. So, but he was in such a hole when he took over the company um, that I think there's just uh, some stuff's just going to take time. So I say by mania, you have like, a good amount of time to build stories. You've had a good amount of time to change everything else. They need to get NXT back on track. They're probably calling people up. Like there's so much going on right now. And this time of year is pretty meaningless. But when you get back into like your, your golden time, your Royal rumble to mania, like that's to me like the, okay, this is the triple H evaluation period now. Cause like 
now you've had some time to set up your chessboard the way you want it to be. So that's what I'm going to come in a little bit harder. But I do agree with you. I feel like a lot of the the returns have been a little bit wasted. I would say Gargano had a just like an all timer hilarious segment on Monday, but like he had so uh-huh, much momentum yeah. coming back that I was like, put him in a mid card thing or whatever. So. Um, I feel like a lot of the returns, the pops were great, but we haven't sustained anything, but I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more patient than I normally am because there was a lot wrong with these programs that he's had to fix. So yeah, I know you're right. As always. Um, we get, I just think Santos Escobar is the coolest dude in the world. If I'm having like a cool guy, triple threat and all of rest, like it's Santos Escobar, Swerve and Ricky Starks, maybe hook, maybe it's a fatal four way. Oh, and hook. Yeah. Bring me some hook. Um, but I, I loved it. Um, they're going to set up Nakamura and Escobar. I hope it's not booked to something stupid. If they get out of their way and just let Shinsuke Nakamura and Santos Escobar have a match, like a match match. Yeah. My word. That could be very, very fun. I like this with Legato. Um, I think Zelina's a really good fit and I think it's a blast. Did you have any thoughts on the little Escobar segment that we saw tonight? Or are you excited for that match? Like I am. I'm 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 okay with it to be honest. Um, I'm still waiting to see a little bit more of the legal f- faction, you know. Sure. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. I'm I'm promos are cool. Like yes, you're telling the story of who they are, and obviously you gotta tell the people. You gotta. It's a television program. You know these are characters, but I'm I don't know. Like the pairing has seemed kind of blah right now, but that's basically because they've only been out for a couple weeks. So I'm I'm. I'm, I don't want to be the old man in the yard yelling at the clouds. I'm going to give things a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of time. Old man yells at cloud. <laughs> um, you know, specifically like with the Bray stuff too. I want to give it a couple months and see where it goes and you see sure? where it develops. Um, I want to give Braun time too. I understand that, you know, there's only so much running around a ring he can do and knocking people into fences. Um, and I'll do the same with uh, with everyone involved in this match. I'll, I'll give it some time and see. Where the hell we're going? It's nice to see Nakamura back on television. You know, haven't uh, haven't seen him in forever. You know, so yeah, and you know, we got to see uh, we got to see where this goes. Um, speaking of Bray and you having patience for him, we got a Bray pacing backstage segment. <laughs> Isn't it cool? I, I feel like I do this for a living. I feel like I'm a producer of some kind. I don't, I'm not sure, Kate. I, okay. So here's the segment in a nutshell. Uh, I loved him saying, he kind of essentially says that like being vulnerable is new for him. So when he overreacts to being cut off, it's because he's like in an uncomfortable place. And then we see that play out with the PA guy. And I just, I love the way he's tying like very human elements into this. I don't know if it's supernatural or not, but this other side of him, like this uncle howdy side, whatever, like why at six is lining up to be like, this is the most connected it's felt to real life. That is something incredibly relatable of um, being vulnerable for the first time. Is an extremely jarring feeling. If you've ever been like locked up on something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just really, really like that. He he's coming back as like the guy that's happy to be back, but he's uncomfortable with it. Yeah. This, this poor PA extra got discarded in a hurry, but I've really, really liked that. I'll say that the, I hope he films some promos at different locations because he him just walking back and forth in the dark is like a little bit in my head. He's never stopped walking back and forth in the dark. He was there last week doing it. He's there this <laughs> week doing it. He's that's all that's this guy does. does. <laughs> but I does. like I didn't like when they had the music playing under his promo. But like if they're leaning into this, like, uh, you know, being distracted or my vulnerability getting interrupted is something that like upsets me like Mm -hmm. music playing in the background is something that might upset him. Like this is all very calculated. It's all very cared for, but I just like that. There's some relatability that we never got with fiend version of him. We Wyatt Texas chainsaw massacre, Wyatt family guy felt like a little bit more grounded, but this by far is the most like human appeal connected to whatever this like dark disturbance is going on with it. So I absolutely, absolutely love it. Um, Did you have any thoughts on this? 
Yeah, yeah. This um, again. I'm just gonna give it time. I'm gonna see where this goes. Um, I'm. I was very impatient with the whole um, QR code thing because we all knew what was happening and we all knew who it was. So you might as well. You could have saved me weeks of that trash by giving me what you're giving me now. <laughs> you know, so like. Bring However, it wasn't that many weeks. First of all, and you love it, to go back at me. We're like, Alex, we're only two weeks in. I'm like, it feels like two months. Kate. Oh my gosh, because a both of my Alexes were doing that, and I was like, it's been two weeks. Like this is not eternity. Um, and be like, I, I actually didn't love it either, but it really worked. Like everybody was talking about it. <laughs> everybody so i was like well who am i to say it's not a good tactic then right. like clearly it worked but i'm an, i'm just a guy sitting at home armchair yeah. armchair quarterbacking this thing that's what we pay you to do we love that here what when did you start paying me that's what i want to know <laughs> okay sean pays you but still um we shout out to louise who forgot to put the bray segment in the rundown and wrote forgot about this colon Bray Wyatt hoots and hollers at a producer. I love that. That's very funny. Uh, <laughs> so get in the remaining Super Chats and Humper Chats if you have them. If there were ever was ever a match to have about them tonight, them about tonight, it might be this match. I thought this was awesome. Earlier mm-hmm. in the night, we get an interview with Ray. We get an interview with um, Imperium. We get Ludwig Kaiser saying that Dom turned on Ray because Ray has no honor. What? That's rude. But uh, this was like a pretty classic. It just goes to show you sometimes like classic templates really work in pro wrestling when the people know how to fill them in. Like these are two guys that knew their roles extremely well. We see the big guy picking on the little guy story all the time. The way this was filled in is why wrestling is an art form, in my opinion. I thought this was unbelievable. I say it all the time. I have no idea how Ray Mysterio can do what he does with his bump card and his age. It blows my mind. Ultimately, this ends on what I thought was the perfect ending to the story that they were telling in the short time. It ends on a head scissors, and then when Ray goes for the 619, he's just met with a big boot, and Guther yanks him up and lariats him for the pin. Great combination of styles here. Rey Mysterio just not quitting, just being like that gnat that you can't swat, and Gunther getting frustrated with it was so much fun to watch. This was just a great professional wrestling match. I loved what we saw tonight. I thought the build going into this was pretty cool, too. I thought everybody just kind of assumed Sheamus was going to win the qualifier to get here. I liked that there was a qualifier to get here. Nice having matches with stakes in them again. But gosh, these are just two professional wrestlers who know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly how to tell a story. And even though it's a story that we see a lot in pro wrestling, it's one of the most organic stories you can have. You're rooting for the little guy to beat up the big guy. Who doesn't love that? Um, But I just loved Gunther's facial expressions in this of like, why the hell won't this guy just be done? Like, it's so, so, so good. And Ray is just uh, a master at this. Like, he's just unbelievable. But your usual really hard hitting stuff from Gunther here always looks yeah. impressive on guys with Rey Mysterio's size, but uh, I I really liked the ending because I felt like it was the perfect summation to the story they were telling of Ray just like experienced veteran doing textbook perfect stuff and then just running into a big boot getting thrown in the air and lariated for the loss like just a really really fun match a great way to close out the show. What were your thoughts on this? Yeah, I I love Imperium. I love their intro. I love the way they just they beat their crap out of people. <laughs> I love the hard hitting action uh, that David versus Goliath deal with. Poor Ray Ray, uh, <laughs> who's at you know fifty years old, is getting pummeled in the ring, and it's still fun to watch. Um, yeah, I mean this again. This is just another another way to show uh, you know Gunther's dominance and who he is. You know what I'm saying? And and give Ray some shine as well. Continue to put him on television. People love seeing Ray, so why not? Um, but I do see that. Um, do you think Gunther drops the belt anytime soon? Do you I think don't know he... if it's soon. I think it is probably to Sheamus in their third match. Yeah. 
I think they want to make Sheamus that Grand Slam champion. He just got married, so congratulations to him. Yeah, he was out there by you. Oh, was that around here? Yeah, he got married in New York. He was taking pictures over there. I didn't see where. I just saw all the fellas in their kilts. Some familiar faces. Yeah, some Cesaro, ROH Miro. peeps. Yeah, it was I saw, very, I saw, very I saw the guy that looks like Cesaro Claudio. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I was going back. I was going back to the bar in my head. Yeah, it's um, all good. It's understandable. But, uh, Drew, Miro, all them. It was yeah, really nice. Drew and some weird dude. Just some Probably random family. non-wrestler. Yeah. yeah. He must have felt so... I was like, that guy must He does so not look place. happy. Yeah. It's probably like his now brother-in-law or something. Um, but uh but yeah, I think I think this ends with Seamus becoming that Grand Slam champion. I think a lot of this year has been Seamus reminding everyone how good he is at this. Um, and I also think now that you have Imperium as a full-fledged faction, yeah, you there's so many places you can go as far as internally the reason Gunther has lost. You can have them face Legato. You can have them place the bloodline. Like, there's so many places you can go with that. I would not be angry to see um, uh, Pete Dunn Gunther rematch. I would not be mad to see Tyler Bate on the main roster facing some of these guys. So I think now that Imperium's a, a three person group, there's way more options of what you can do with that moving forward because we're getting nice and stable heavy in, in WWE. So. Can, can I also bring this up? The f- <clears throat> We, you know, I've been watching wrestling for a very long time since the days with my grandpa in Puerto Rico, sitting on his lap watching Carlitos Colon versus Ric Flair. This seeing Sheamus evolve, Sheamus has been in WWE for a long time. It's crazy to see the faces that have stuck around in the last couple of years who have that let go of and who, who they haven't. Mm-hmm. And to see this part of Sheamus' career and perhaps winding down as he's getting married and perhaps doing less and less in the ring, you know, and kind of becoming more of a ring general to help other people out. It's pretty cool to me. Like I, I, I've, we've watched him as a, basically as a kid come up into the business and look where he's at now. All those, all those fuse with triple H, like mm-hmm. Randy I started, Orton. Oh my God. I started watching in 09. So he like was on the radar I'm losing to John Cena, of course. But yes. like when he first came up as this, like, my God, this, I was like, this guy is awesome. And then they had him like doing goofy Irish stuff, telling stories and whatever. <laughs> but I loved the bar. Like, you're right. Like, I think when we think of like wrestlers that reinvent themselves, we automatically go to William Regal's and Chris Jericho's to people whose like characters have evolved. So that Hardy's, Oh my God, one of the best examples um, whose characters have like drastically evolved in so many ways. So I think like you forget a guy like Seamus has evolved in so many ways without like um, necessarily like so many character overhauls, Mm -hmm. but like tag team stuff, doing the more comedic stuff, doing the dead ass serious. He's always been Seamus though, which is great. Always been Seamus and always like in the ballpark of who he is. So I th- that's a, a very good point. Like he has reinvented himself in a lot of ways, just not like in the way that I think we typically default to when we talk about yeah. like wrestlers that reinvent themselves. I've, I've been watching a lot of wrestling guys since uh, I've, I watched the very first Monday Night Raw with my Did dad. Did you really? Yeah, and, I, and, I've, and I've watched since the, you know, the very first Mall of America, WCW, you know? Hey. So like there's a lot of wrestling in my life, man. Man, I like... Because I started watching in 09, I'm always asking people for like what to go back and watch. And I like, again, not to be like such a punk mark, but like he was the first guy that was referencing places outside of WWE since I had started watching. So I was like, what is a New Japan? How do you ROH? Like, what are these places he's talking about? And I like fell so in love with like mid 80s NWA. I was like, of all the things to fall in love with going from like sports entertainment Oh nine <clears throat> WWE to being like you have an old soul, Kate, in wrestling terms. <laughs> Dusty two was the Dusty Flair two was the best or whatever. Like it was just so funny, but um, but yeah, that concludes SmackDown, and we thank you so much for joining us tonight and our sweet little like button that we put on this episode. But we appreciate you guys so much for joining us. Alice, before I sum up my all over the place weekend, where can the good people find you? 
<laughs> hey, just head over to uh, on Instagram, Alexis Cardoza, and you'll find all my links, my OFs, everything right in there. And uh, just give me a follow on everything. Things. Um, I apologize for like how th- I, I know I've only been here for like almost two and a half, three weeks uh, since I first moved down here. So I apologize to anyone. Like I, I've I've had some ideas for the fight for overbook show and stuff like that. But unfortunately, because of the way the construction and the moving has, you know, everything has been going. I don't have everything that I need. And so I only got the bare minimum and I'm not going to half ass something that I really want to bring to you guys. So um, that's still that's still that I go full ass. Um, So that's still coming down the pipeline and some other projects. So if anybody that's following me and doesn't see me on social too much, it's just I'm still getting very much adjusted to not being in my own house, still staying in an Airbnb and whatnot. So unacceptable. I know I'm such a loser. It's about drive. It's about power. It's okay, okay? Alex. We'll give Kate the show instead. I don't know who this is. I'm going to assume it's Joel. It could be Jeremy. I don't know who this is. on the. Kate just took my IP just to let everyone know that. (laughs) Subscribe to Fightful Overbooked. Fightful Overbooked rules. Um, I am going to be doing, as we promoted on Fightful Select, uh, I'll be doing your crown jewel your sands of blind post show in uh, the silliest format that we do uh it is joel he's uploading newsworthy as we speak so see see how hard working this team is tomorrow i will also be before we do that post show for for crown jewel around nine i will be at excite wrestling in upstate new york twitch.tv slash excite wrestling gonna be a really fun card uh and tuesday i'm back on nxt sour grabs post show with alex so tune in we're having so much fun here on fightful have a wonderful and safe weekend enjoy wrestling this weekend if you are watching and again um if you can donate to miss share delaware's go fund me either via the link or via super chat for on the main channel tomorrow please feel free to do so but we hope to see you this weekend have a safe and blessed one